Ricky here with Breaking Your Barriers coming to you with our segment on hanging out with local heroes. And today's local hero is a friend of mine. Not only is he a friend, he's one of the coolest cats that I know. And not only is a cool cat, this dude has ridiculous humility. And the reason I say that is because when I invited my friend to speak today, he said, I'm not a hero. And I said, you are. Ricky, do I need to wear a cape? Do I have to do this? And I was like, brother, just your humility alone, your breaking through the barriers that you've broken through in your life, not using any excuses to achieve what you've achieved in real estate, in speaking, in business, in your family life. This guy's a hero. He's an inspiration to me. And I guarantee you, he's going to be an inspiration to you. With that said, my friend Min, go ahead and feel free to introduce yourself and share any story you'd like to share with our audience. All right, thank you, Ricky, and, and hello, everyone. I know Ricky for a few years, and I know he's very generous with his um, um, compliments. Uh, I'm, I'm, of course, I'm still very doubtful if I am a hero, um, but I do have a couple of stories I would like to share, and my barrier was the language. I came to the U United States about 11 years ago, and my number one problem was the communication. I grew up in Vietnam and had a um, establishing career before I came here. It was really, really hard. It was harder than I thought to reestablish uh, a new life in a new country, and I didn't thought I didn't think that language would have been a, a big problem, but it was. Uh, when I came here for a couple of months, I realized that the, the English I studied in school was actually British English in the textbooks, which was the language people talk in the 60s, 70s. And people didn't speak that kind of English here. I had a really hard time to talk to anyone, even my cousins, because we had nothing in common. And I didn't, I didn't understand what they said. And when I tried to express my ideas, nobody understood me. So I started with talking to my friends who also came here a few years before I did. I asked them, hey, how long did it take for you to adapt into this life? Uh, how long did it take for you to speak like an American? Um, one of my good friends told me I was never speak like an American. It's their language. It's not my language. I still mm. speak Vietnamese. I went to school and uh, I knew what to say in my career, my, my field. But other than that, I still have a hard time communicating. It was very discouraging, I would have to say, because I was a very talkative person. I was in sales, I was in education when I was in Vietnam. And could you imagine, I could no longer do whatever I was good at when I came to the United States. So I spent a year and a half trying different ways. I went to college and take the uh, interpersonal communication class. It didn't work. Um, I tried to take a private training for court interpretation and it didn't work. So finally, I, I tried Toastmaster, which my uncle introduced me to and he said, hey, this is a good organization about public speaking. I thought to myself, ESL person and public speaking, how would that go together? But I didn't have any other options, so I went there. And what I realized is actually I was teachable. Mm. And that was a great thing about um, this country. Um, we have plenty of op opportunities to learn and to improve as long as, as you want to. So Toastmaster was one of the way I improved myself. And then I was looking for something to do. I wanted to start a business because of course nobody wanted to hire me. I didn't have a degree here and they couldn't understand me in the interview, right? And I found out about uh, SCORE. It's is a, uh, also a partner with um, SBA, Small Business Association, and they offer free training for business owners or people who want to start business. And then when I move on and on in my life, I sometimes I got the job, sometimes I started a new business and I meet new people. But all of those times, I was always able to find somebody who was willing to teach me something. And through learning and practicing, I was able to become a salesperson for a few years and I did pretty well with, uh, with sales. And then I moved on and started a business, which I uh, ran for six years until 2019 and then by 20, um, middle of 2019, I moved forward and became a real estate agent. And I still have opportunities. I still um, get people who come and teach me and I see myself advancing in my career. 
um, for a uh, new agents like me, people said that I had a really good year because I opened a total of 19 escrows in the last 12 months and it's during the pandemic. If I take myself back to 10, 11 years ago when I first came to the United States, I would never believe that was able. Yeah, when you couldn't talk to anybody and think about negotiation, think about uh, convincing your, your clients, thinking about all of those technical terms in real estate and other fields, how could that happen? But I would say the opportunity to learn and to improve myself um, every single day, and especially I would say the non-judgmental um, attitude from, from people around me. Um, there were people who couldn't understand me after I say three or four times and gave up, but then gradually when they keep trying, they were patient to listen to me and, and also to correct what I did wrong. Um, I, didn't, I didn't see that in a lot of other places. Um, mm. but, but here in, in the United States and in, in Southern California, it happened to me and it creates the person I am today. Hey brother, I, I need to ask, and I'm sure most, most people who are going to be listening to this are probably going to ask you the same thing. When you were discouraged, what forced you, what motivated you to keep fighting forward, especially that it was a foreign country and nobody understood what the hell you were talking about because your English was of the 60s and it was a British, British style. What kept you fighting forward and not giving up? Uh, first, uh, you have to survive, of course. <laughs> There's no way I, I couldn't go back to Vietnam. I couldn't even afford a, a ticket to go back to Vietnam. And um, what I learned from movies and from other people talking about the United States when it was in Vietnam is this is a land of opportunity. That is the reason why so many people try to come to the United States and to build a career. So I know uh, opportunities is, is somewhere. You just have to go and find it. And at that time, I was in the rock bottom. There was nothing could be worse. Right. Um, I didn't get a job. I didn't get money. I didn't. I didn't even go to school by that time because it didn't work. So um, I would say, if I could get better tomorrow, then then this is a progress. And I I have seen uh, people like immigrants like me who were successful by that time. And I wonder there must be a way. I just need to find it. So. That's, that's how I continue to move forward. I love that. And uh, you know, what's crazy about that brother is this, I'm born, I'm born here, born and raised in the United States. And personally speaking, if I can't make it here, there's nothing wrong with the country. You said it right. There's something wrong with me because there's, there is an opportunity. You're right. Because I went back to the Philippines too. And I saw the opportunity there is ridiculously slim. You need to pass through the hole of a straw to get that job. Here, if you have a dream, shoot, you can do anything you want. And there, that's the reason why, Min, I had to invite you because I knew you were going to talk about this. And I was praying you're going to talk about this because you are a hero, even though you don't have that cape. I'll get you the cape, man. <laughs> the reason why you're a hero, brother, is because 11 years ago, you couldn't speak american english nobody could understand you here you are years later closing 19 escrows in a year shoot i know real estate agents who don't close that in a, in many years you you're so new to real estate but the one thing that you carry is you you have that charisma and that's one thing i could share as a friend if i'm telling you listeners if you don't know this dude he's one of the most charismatic people you'll ever meet now Here's the thing, my friend, people are going to ask you, hey, Min, what's the secret? So I'm going to ask you, I know there's no secret, but I want to, I want to hear what you have to say when people ask that. What's the secret to your success? I know you learned your English. I know you went to Toastmasters. I know you asked a bunch of people, but how did you succeed so profoundly in what you do? Um Thank you for, uh, for asking me this question. First correction, I did close 19 escrow. I opened 19 and some closed, some are still going on and some did not. But um, I would say it keeps me busy. Uh, and regarding to the secrets, I would say uh, listening. Mm -hmm. So um, when I was trying to improve my English, what I realized is if I 
just listen, uh, listen attentively. I would recognize what I did wrong. Uh, many of the times I was watching movie or I was passing by a TV that was that there was some news or something. Mm -hmm. And I heard a word and say, hey, I didn't pronounce this word correctly. So now from now on, I should pronounce this this wow. way. And then I also listen to stories from my friends who have the same struggle or different strugglings and try to understand from their point of view. Or when I, I went to real estate, I know it is a tough market and a lot of people could <sighs> buy a home. So I sat down and listened to my clients and find out what kept them from buying a home. Mm. So from that perspective, I understand the word a lot better because from different perspectives. And then I was able to offer my experience. Most of the time, I just share my personal experience because I was struggling with speaking. I was struggling with buying my own home uh, many years ago. So I would just connect with other people by, hey, this is my story. I listened to your story and this is my story. I, I know it's not exact uh, same experience, but I hope that you can get some takeaway and overcome your own problem. And it helps me connect with a lot, a lot of new friends. I have a lot more friends now than, than before. And the conversation continued to going. I occasionally, I check up with my friends, like even with you. Uh, occasionally, we send texts to each other and see how everything is going and what is your success, what is your challenging. We share all of those stories and I was able to learn a lot more. From, from other people, uh, success and of course, failures. I'm proud of you. And the reason I'm proud of you is I'm, I have to share this. For those of you that are listening, I gotta share this. My man here is a competitive speaker. Last year, he made it to the area contest, which don't worry about that. That's just, that's just whatever the name is of the contest. This year, he literally almost made it to the district finals. And once again, this has to do with Toastmasters. So if you want to look it up, look it up. The reason why I'm proud is because, hello, 11 years ago, this brother was struggling with English. Now he's a competitive speaker. And to compete at those levels, it's not a joke. For him to win for the club level, the area level, the um, division level, that's not a joke. You compete against well-versed English-speaking folks. And this brother was... <laughs> was putting them on the sidelines. <laughs> so I'm very proud of, I'm very proud of my, my friend over here. And he said something that is Thank extremely, you. hey, you're welcome, brother. You said something that was super ridiculously, amazingly key that we need to do nowadays because it's one of the weaknesses of today's society. Listening. Listening intently and focusing on the person you are speaking with. The reason why that's so difficult nowadays is because people are so busy with this. They're always on this. They're wondering, oh, what's the next trendy thing? What's the next cat video? What's the next this? My friend, he said something so profound and it is so ridiculously needed in today's society. We need to learn how to listen. And when we listen, we need to listen intently. We need to look at the person, give them our 100% focus for that few minutes. And guess what? Not only will you become a better friend, you will understand and comprehend much more. Min, thanks for that. That's, that's amazing. And if there's anything I can ask you, it would be, it would be this. Regardless of a person being local from the United States or an immigrant from another country, what tips, what advice, what suggestions, or what life experience could you give somebody who believes there is no hope? Um, I would say, if you think there is no hope, I totally understand that's because nowadays we see so many negativity on the newspaper, on the social media. Uh, we've seen a lot of um, inequality um, and sometimes we believe that um, this is, we're, we're done. This is all that we got. Uh, 10, 11 years ago, when I first came here, uh, I had the same perspective because several people told me that you never succeed in this country because this is not your, your home country. This is not your culture. This is not your language. And you're just hanging there and hopefully your kids, your grandkids will be successful. I would say that is not right because um, 
at least I am moving up in my career and in my uh, personal life here in the new United States. Mm -hmm. I do feel like I am, um, I wouldn't say I'm fully American because you can still hear my accent. You can still see a lot of uh, cultural difference um, when I talk. Like I don't, I, I smile and nod a lot instead of res being responsive. But I do feel like I am an American now. So if you feel like you have no hope, I would, I would um, highly, highly um, encourage you to think about just one thing that you can do better. It can be better, something better for yourself. It can be something better for the person next to you. Uh, it can be something better for, for the world. It depends on how, how, how much you want to, to do. And just do one thing every day and a week, a month, a year, have a self-reflection and see how that impacts other people around you. I remember when I was new here and I was struggling by myself, but um, I also had other friends who came here at the same time. I told them about how I was struggling with my problems right. and they were very generous to give me advices. And you know what? They felt good about themselves too because they were helping me. That's right. um, I would say now, maybe you're, you're having your own struggle, but there are people, other people who struggle as well. What about you share, uh, you open your heart and share your stories with other people like I am doing now, and you're helping someone. And that is hope. That is something that makes this life, this country, and, and the people around you better. Thank you. Hey, brother, you know what? You said something that made you even more amazingly human. Number one, you're not bulletproof. You don't have a cape. You're not flying through the air. All you do is you make the most important thing, which is a choice. You make that choice to do something for yourself. You do not let your surroundings dictate what you will become, when you will become, and how you will become what it is you want to become in the first place. You, brother, you choose it every single day. Now, granted, you and I have that day where we just say, you know what? I'm going to watch YouTube channels. I'm going to watch TV all day long. We're not robots. <laughs> There's going to be days when you say, screw it. I don't want to do nothing. So don't think that we do or men does every single day something hardcore. He takes breaks too. He feels lazy too. Laziness is not based on race. Laziness is global. <laughs> Everybody's lazy from time to time. Right. <laughs> and what I love about what you said was, you feel more American. Now, one thing I've come to realize is this, being American is in the heart. Being Vietnamese like yourself is in the heart. And the reason why is because that's, that's who you are. That's your culture. That's where you come from. Love that, embrace that, bring that beauty of your culture to America. So the people that don't understand it, learn about you. And, that's, and you're right, you're sharing stories. So if somebody had a misconceived notion about Vietnam, when they speak to you, they realize, you know what? Vietnamese folks are just as crazy as American folks in a fun way and in their own quirky ways. Now we have our little differences, but I'll tell you this, being American is not a color, it's not a race, it's not an age, it's in your heart. I'm American to the heart. I'm also Filipino to the heart. Well, man is American to the heart and he's also Vietnamese, but we love America. and. I love, I love that. I love everything you've shared, brother. If, if I can, I'm just going to say it because the people are probably wondering, well, man, what did you do every single day? We want to know what specific thing you did every single day to get you to where you are at today. I want to know that that's probably what they're thinking. So if there's something you could share, man, let us have it. <laughs> Okay, one thing I have been doing almost every day is learning. I even though I graduated from uh, from an MBA in 2016, and I haven't went back to any school since then, I kept learning. I took online courses, and when I went to real estate, there are trainings. And if I'm not in trainings, I um, go to libraries. Actually, my wife and I date in library. Um, yeah, that's how boring we are, <laughs> or nerdy we are. Depends on how you look at it. <laughs> But um, I would say the, the ability to continue to educate yourself is really a gift because your life will never be boring. 
your life will never be hopeless. Everything, every day you learn something new and it opens more opportunities. It opens more um, connection. You know more to talk to, you can connect to more to different people. And um, reading is not that boring. Maybe not as fun as watching YouTube video, but sometimes you just need to take a break and read something and let it go through you in the, in the pace that you want. Uh, instead of having a five minute, 10 minutes where people just push information through your brands uh, from, from a video um, and, and try different things. If you, if you don't like reading, you can do audio books um, or you can just talk to people with experienced experts and you learn from, from their stories, but try to learn something new every day. That is, that is my number one um, recommendation. Thanks, man. Man. Wow. Now, for those of you who are listening, men's friends, as well as those who land on this channel, I hope you're blessed by the message men left for us today. And like I told you, this brother of mine, he's a friend of mine. I'm actually very blessed to call him my friend. And he, he inspires me. Every time this guy speaks, he's one of the funniest guys you'll, you'll meet. I know that from experience. <laughs> if you ever get a chance to know this man, trust me, he's, he's one of the funniest guys. Now, with that said, the messages that he, the advice messages that he left for us are extremely profound. Number one, <clears throat> there's two, there's three things. Number one, do not use reasonitis to fail. Don't come up with reasons. I don't speak English. I don't have this. I don't have an education. I come from a different country. I have only one arm. I have only a small amount of intellect in my brain. Stop giving yourselves reasons to fail. That's what that's what Min shared first and foremost, because he came here not knowing anything, but he didn't use that as a reason to fail. Number two, you're going to make a choice anyway. Why would you want to make failure an option? Don't make that your option. What you do is you choose success as you fail along the way. That's what you have to do. And thirdly, have a wonderful, wonderful attitude. Be kind, be willing to help, be willing to pay forward the kindness. And with what, what my man shared at the very end, always, always find a way to educate yourself so that you can find more ways to relate to people you don't know yet. You'll have something to talk about. You'll understand why they are that way. And you'll have more friends. Now, with that said, I just want to say thank you, a brother Min. Thanks for being being here today. You you inspired me. You always do, but you always inspire. You inspired our listeners, guaranteed. Thank you, Ricky, for the opportunity to share my story. Uh, I hope that uh, it will help you, if if any, um, and uh, for a moment inspire you to move forward and, and and learn more. And of course, I look forward to um, more stories from from you with, with Ricky in the future. You got it, brother. You definitely going to be on here. Now, he he said it. More stories, more stories, more stories. Now, if you have any co comments for men or anything that you want to say or want to get to know this awesome guy, leave me a comment. I'll make sure he gets it. Otherwise, thank you for hanging out with us on Hanging Out with Local Heroes with my friend Min. Until the next time, see you guys. <laughs>